Here we are, Tuesday, March 24th, doing a little home seminary with Ryan Guy. All right, so we're gonna open up to Enos. So Ryan just taught this lesson on Sunday in our from home experience. Churching from home. So what's interesting is in uh, verse uh, verse four, he says, uh, "This Enos, my soul hungered." What do you think that means to have your soul hunger? That he wanted to have more of the like the gospel. He still like. Kind of like, like we feast upon the words of Christ, so you, so you wanted more of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, what else do you think he hungered for? For forgiveness? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. he wanted his sincere forgiveness. Yeah, he felt like um, whatever was going on in his life, he needed to feel uh, repentant of it. And you already taught this, so um, he first, you know, you know, if we kind of have like a circle. Um, uh, a, a sphere of, what we call this, like a, an influence. So you first worry about Enos and his own sins, right? And then who do you then was he concerned about with next? His the Nephites. The Nephites, right? So let's just call it his community, right? People that he associated with, people that he might have been family and friends, right? And then who were the people next? Um, the Lamanites. Yeah, and then what were they to him? Yes. Of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they're they're people that wanted to kill him, right? Um, at the same time. So when we think about this for kind of the love that we have for God, God says, you know, love, love him with all, his, with all our heart, my mind, and strength, and to love everyone. He isn't saying love him with an asterisk, right? Like, oh, but if there are a certain kind of people, then don't. And why do you think that that's part of the commandment for God? Why, is, why do you think he wants us to... Love everybody, regardless of kind of who there's their their position to us. Because he loves everyone the same, and that all were created in our own image. <coughs> yeah, that's absolutely correct. Um, what do you think? <clears throat> As you think about how Enos prayed, there's different words that get used. Like in verse two, how do they how do they say the prayer was? We're gonna list them out. He wrestled. He wrestled. Okay. What else? Um, as you kind of skim through, you talk less as well. What's the other words that they described him praying? Mightily. Mm hmm. Mm. Pour out my whole soul. Okay, pour out my soul. I see in verse 4, cried. Oh. Cried unto him. And then um, in verse 4 at the very end, it says, I did still raise my voice. Yeah. 
Well, with many long strugglings. Okay. Prayed and labored with all, di so with all diligence. Cried mm -hmm. unto him continually. So, those are great descriptions of the prayer. Question to ask ourselves, is this how you would describe your prayers to God? No. Um, to yourself? <laughs> no. You know, and, and, and then what can we do to, to have better prayers? What... Um, what could, we, what could we be saying? How could our heart be different? Um, so in the, in the first part of the um, first verses, right? Enos is praying for himself. And then how does God answer him? It's in verse 5. Thy sins are forgiven to thee, and thou shalt be blessed. Okay. So it was, um, it was a voice. And then... Um, and then in verse 6, he says, Wherefore my guilt was swept away. So first it was a voice, and then it was a feeling of being forgiven. And then he asks, How's it done? And he says, It's um, because of thy faith in Christ. Um, wherefore go to you, thy faith is made be whole. Um, so What's interesting then in verse 9 is that's when after he got a remission of his sins, that's when immediately afterwards he had a desire for the welfare of my brethren, the Nephites. He would pour out his whole soul unto them, to, to God for them. Have you ever prayed for someone <coughs> that comes to mind that you wanted certain things to assume you help? Well, can you think of a time where you prayed for someone that you wanted, that, that you felt like they needed help? Yeah. And do you think you prayed more mildly for them than you did for, than you do for yourself? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you do, right? And so sometimes that can be a powerful way to, um, to feel connected with another person is to pray for them. Um, particularly because the, that prayer of, of hope and faith is going to be based on, be based on love. All right. And then um, God answers him how um, in verse 11. Uh, how does God answer him in verse 11? Uh, his faith began to be unshaken. Yes. Um, and then, but then, and, but then he continued to pray. Um, uh -huh. and then the, the verse 12. In the middle part there, the Lord said unto him, I will grant to thee according to thy desires because of thy faith. So, um, who then, or how did the Lord answer him again? He will basically grant what he wanted. Um, yeah, yeah, well, more so specifically, I'm saying like he spoke to him, right? Uh, a voice. Um, now we don't know if that was a voice from heaven or if it was a voice that he just heard. You know, the feeling that he had. Um, but then after that, he he has a desire that the records have be preserved, right? And so he prays literally for the Book of Mormon, well, that 
well, now we have it as a book more. Back then, it was the, the plates, right? The golden plates. Mm -hmm. um, and then in verse 15, how does he answer him again? Um, so just read uh, wherefore, I, and I'll stop you. Wherefore, I knowing that the Lord a God was able to preserve our records, I cried unto him continually, for he had cried said unto me. So stop right there. How did, how did then God respond to him? Knowing that a feeling? Uh -huh. Well, and then he said. He said unto him. So now we're talking about voice, right? For he said oh, unto me. Said it. So he, just, he spoke again to, to Enos. And this is exactly what you had said. That whatsoever thing you ask in faith, Believing that ye shall receive it in the name of Christ, ye shall receive it. So this is very much like the uh, James one verse five. Let's go to that here very briefly. You can see that. God that giveth to all men liberally, and the greatest not, and it shall be given him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And read then verse um, verse six. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave for the sea of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Okay. So then how should we be praying? Well, first off, what's the promise? If you ask of God without 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 a doubt, mm -hmm. it shall be given unto him. Do you believe that? Yeah. So, the the Church of Jesus Christ is based on millions upon millions of prayers. But in particular, back in 1820, when Joseph Smith was about your age, he wanted to know which church to join. And he prayed. And God spoke to him. So we're going to watch this, um, it's Ask of God, Joseph Smith's first vision. It's a six minute video. That's how we'll kind of lesson today. It's on YouTube, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, 